What's doing? Welcome to another episode. This one's about an N80 with a plug-in module, but does it do anything? Let's find out. That's right. This is a plug-in module. I've actually filmed one about this before, but some idiot, me, uh, deleted all the footage. So I've got another one. Uh, same module, same thing that plugs in and tunes your car, uh, remappers your car, if you can read my gist. Uh, and it doesn't drive like it should. It doesn't make the power it should. Uh, it's a waste of money. Let's have a look at the car. So we have Psycho Airbox, we have Toyota Snorkel, we have uh, HPD, trans cooler and inner cooler with the HPD uh, hard pipes, uh, HPD catch can, and the three inch exhaust. So this has got all the usual sort of stuff, pretty much the same as mine, this is just like a Gen 1, Gen 2, so it won't make the same power. Uh, it's come in, I'll run it up. We can see on the screen here, we've got 112 and 396, 397. I just did from 90 through to 140, then through to 155, that's a rev out to like four grand for a bit there, uh, just to see where it goes all the way out. Now, this is only making 112 kilowatts and 400 newton meters. I know I can make more. Uh, so I'm gonna wipe out what's in there. I'm gonna start again. But let's jump inside and I'll show you this remapper. So we're inside the car now, aircon's on because it's a little bit warmer today. Well, we've got 34 degrees outside and about 100% humidity. So inside, aircon on. It's got all the bells and whistles inside as well. Not that it matters to the tune, but roof console, nice heads unit, uh, all the gear. Now, this is our module. Now this little thing here, Tune your car apparently. Uh, look, it does work, but you uh, you need to make sure you're getting a good tune. So let's talk about these. All right, so these things do work. Uh, I have used them in the past to have multiple tunes on like a 200 series Land Cruiser. Um, it stores tunes on here and you can load in different ones instead of having the push button. So since then I've gone to the push button so we can do multi-mapping uh, on that instead of having to rely on this thing and I have to load it in. These things, like I said, they, the product works. Uh, the maths behind it, the tuning behind it sometimes doesn't um, because you're buying it from somewhere over the other side of the country from me in the Sunshine Coast. Uh, you get it, you read the file out of your car uh, into this and then you send that away via email. They then send you back a file and you load that in. So you're getting a file, a tune out of a car from who knows what and you just tell them what mod you got but it's not actually tuned to the car. So yeah, it's getting, you're getting a tune, but you're not actually getting tuned to the car. No one's watching the AFRs, no one's watching the boost, no one's watching anything. Uh, intake air temps, exhaust temps, no, nothing gets monitored. You're just loading a file in and hoping for the best. If I'm running these, uh, I would run this, like I said, on the diner here, I'd tune the car, and then I'd load another tune into the car, and you can have multiple tunes on this and load it backwards and forwards. Um, that's the only reason you'd want to use one of these and not buy it and get a over the internet tune. Not ideal. Okay, so you heard me talk before about AFRs and boost. AFR is the air fuel ratio, boost is boost. So let's have a look at what this one has before I tune. All right, so here's, I've just gone through the one run from 140 so you can just see what's going on. It's sort of taped off anyway, but uh, solid line is always this side of the dyno. Dotted line is always this side of the dyno sheet. So our solid line shows just under 20 PSI and tapers away. It's not too bad, these turbos can go just over 20. Uh, so boost isn't too bad, we can put a little bit more in it. Uh, but what we're looking at is this AFR. So if we go across here to this line, you're looking at 16, and actually ducks down into the 15s to one. So here, I'll bring up my little cursor and we'll see. Actually gets down to 15 to one in the mid range. Now, what does that mean? That means more fuel, more heat, uh, and it's not necessary. So let's wipe this out. Let's start again. I'll probably give it a little bit more boost because it's got it's good mods here. It's got the air, air box and the inner cooler and the hard pipes and all those things. So if we can push that little, the turbo on these, this is gen two, so we can go a little bit more than 20 pound, that'll be okay. Uh, we'll take some fuel out of it. And I'm also gonna do an auto tune on this one. It won't affect the dyno run, but once they drive out of here, it'll uh, change the way the car drives completely and save more fuel again on top of what they've already got. Uh, Cause we'll have lock up in four, fifth and six. So let's load this file in, uh, get this going a little bit better. I'll do some playing around with it, make sure we get the boost right. And then uh, I'll show you the end run where we're going and what the AFR comes out at and what the boost comes out at. And you should see some really good differences. All right, so I've got the stock file here. We're just gonna have a bit of a play with it. So we'll uh, get this stock file, modify that, 
and then we'll load it in to the car. And once it's loaded in, we'll give it a run up, see where it goes. We'll have a bit of a play of a tune. We'll load another file back in uh, and it should be pretty close. And then we'll see where we're at at the end. I'll show you what it looks like and sounds like on the dyno. And we'll give you some results when it's done. <laughs> All right, so we've done a stock run and we've done a tune run and I've got it all sorted out. Um, it's a bit boring, you guys just watching dyno run after dyno run. So we've done it all up now. I'll show you some things between what it came in with and what it's going out with. So let's show you comparisons I'll show you before the map, the actual manifold pressure and the high speed AFR. So let's have a look. So as you can see again, as I said, the solid line is this side and the dotted line is this side. So now solid line, we're just peaking over 22 PSI there and then tapering off. But our fuel line now, look at that, we're just hovering around the 18 to one all the way through big difference between the 15 to the 18. This is now gonna be a lot uh, leaner. By being a lot leaner, uh, it's gonna be a lot easier, cheaper to run. Uh, these don't actually need fuel to run, they're just a vacuum pump. Adding fuel adds heat, uh, adding fuel can add power as well, obviously that's what it's there for, but you can tune these things a lot smarter with the VNT. You don't need to dump a heap of fuel on these things. This is what I'm saying about these remapper modules where people are just loading files, or there's a, there's a couple of places around here locally are doing uh, remapping uh, mobile and at workshops and it's literally just loading a file and then sending it on your way. I wouldn't be doing it. Uh, this is on a dyno, we're mapping everything from intake air temperatures, uh, EGTs. There's a heap of things we map and log on these things. I don't just load a file and send it on your way. That's proof in the pudding there that these things just don't work. Uh, off subject though, have a look at this. What does work is our intake air temps, was well, a bit hotter now, it's idling, it's just sitting here running. Uh, this is about 38 degrees while running but 40 degrees intake air temp with a 37 and a half actual air temp. So while the car's driving, it actually sat on about 37, 38 degrees, loading up through the run the whole way through. So these intercoolers are awesome. I have one in my car. They hold a constant, really low intake air temperatures. They work really well. The lower intake air temperature, the more power you can make constantly. Uh, highly recommend an intercooler upgrade on Hiluxes and Navaras especially. Uh, but the, uh, so the, those intercoolers are really... So I've just loaded up the stock run. So you can see the difference between the remapper, my tune, and a stock tune. So here is the stock numbers, uh, my tune and the remapper tune. Uh, remapper fueling, blue here is my fueling, and the green here is stock. So we're a little bit fatter than stock, but not, <laughs> not down here. Uh, and boost wise, you'll obviously put more boost in so it's changed. So it's a bit of a jump from the 15 pound to just over 20. Uh, but this fueling is a, is a problem. So yeah, we picked up from 90 kilowatts to 125, which puts you to basically the stock Gen 3 range, uh, 440 units again, so the stock Gen 3 range, uh, just with a tune, uh, but not just a remap, a proper tune, custom to the car. This has got mods, so we changed the suit. Uh, I probably wouldn't run that much boost for a car without a big intercooler and airbox. So everything changes depending on what car we've got. Just be wary of what you're getting, guys. Don't just go and get a load-in file because not all tunes are the same, not all cars are the same. Uh, they're just just make sure you spend the money where you need to and do the right thing. And the funny thing is, when I talk about money, these remappers are actually more expensive than a tune. Um, so I don't know why you'd waste your time when you come in to get a proper tune, done to the car, and everything's logged, everything's tuned properly, and you know the car's done right. All right, so now I've just gone to the power and torque maps on the dyno so you can see the differences in actual gain. So let's have a look. So yeah, green is stock, red is the remapper, and blue is mine in the way of torque. Uh, so there's obviously replicated here and there's big jumps in power. So stock, remapper and mine. Uh, so from stock, you're getting what, 80 kilowatts through to 120 uh, at you know, 90 k's an hour. So some awesome gains. Yeah, so just some awesome gains with just a tune. But again, just get the right tune to suit your car. Do your research. Obviously, if you're not local to me, do your research. Find someone uh, who has done a lot of cars, has a lot of data online, not scared to show and talk about what they've got and what they've done. Uh, and reputation, you sort of look through Facebook and forums and things, you'll see people's reputation uh, for what they do and their model cars they do. Just ask the question, is it a custom tune? Do they have a dyno? Uh, that's the biggest thing. Uh, if they don't have a dyno, you know it's not a custom tune. Uh, but yeah, that's it. That's the remapper versus stock versus real tune. Uh, what do you guys think? Do you reckon these remappers are worthwhile? I said the unit itself is really good to have separate tunes on and load them in. The, stuff behind it, not so much. Let me know what your thoughts are. Uh, if you like this technical stuff, let me know. If I want to go more in depth, let me know. Uh, if there's anything else different, make some models you want to know about, let me know. 
comment below. Uh, we'll do that for you when I can. But otherwise, hit that like, hit subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.